Good morning and welcome uh, on this seventh Sunday of Easter. Uh, on Thursday, uh, we celebrated the Feast of the Ascension, and so we are now in Ascension Tide, uh, the last last leg of Easter as we head towards Pentecost. Uh, and uh, today we are. Um, remembering the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Uh, as we begin today, I just need to let, um, uh, well, everyone know, but especially those who are doing uh, parts in the service, um, Zoom can't stop tinkering with their own product. Uh, to that effect, I believe now when I try to unmute someone to let them do a reading or prayers or, or music or something, uh, I have a feeling the person on the other end needs to unmute themselves as well. Uh, so just if you are doing something, you just check that you are unmuted before you, you start because I don't know if I currently have complete control over that system. Uh, and, and equally, when we get to the end of, of the service and we unmute everyone, uh, if, if you don't unmute, just do check your screen um, in case you need to, to manually uh, click off your mute as well. Uh, today's service will be from the New Zealand Prayer Book uh, from page 476. Uh, and as we go through that, if you have... Um, access to a prayer book, do follow along with us. Uh, if you don't have a prayer book, many of you will know the responses. And if not, just allow the prayer to wash over you. Uh, as we begin today, uh, this week, uh, last week I should say, uh, with level two coming into effect, we have had uh, the ability to start having small groups meeting, obviously. And uh, one of those groups is uh, the choir. So obviously the choir is actually too big to all meet, but uh, a, a number of them did get together last week and they have recorded a couple of pieces for today for us, uh, which is lovely. And so the first one we're going to hear is uh, an introit that the choir recorded for us as we are gathered. begin our service on page 476. Etefano Atakaraiti, welcome to this holy time. Welcome to you, for we are Christ's body, Christ's work in the world. Welcome to you, whose baptism makes you salt of the earth and light to the world. Rejoice and be glad, Praise God who gives us forgiveness and hope. Amen. Christ is our light, the joy of our salvation. Praise and glory to Christ, God's new beginning for humanity, making ritual water, gospel wine, cleansing all our worship. Love and loyalty to Christ who gives us the gospel. Praise to Christ, who calls us to holiness. And for our song of praise this morning, we'll be singing together 
the hymn, He is Lord. If you have a green hymn book, it's number 204. Um, otherwise, it was also printed in the email Pew News this week. Uh, 204, He is Lord. And uh, once again, this was another item that members of the St. Mary's Choir uh, with John Hargraves and Lucy Dillon recorded for us earlier this week. And so we come to a time of confession and forgiveness. We come seeking forgiveness for all we have failed to be and do as members of Christ's body. In God, there is forgiveness. Loving and all-seeing God, forgive us where we have failed to support one another and to be what we claim to be. Forgive us where we have failed to serve you and where our thoughts and actions have been contrary to yours, we ask your pardon. God forgives us. Be at peace. Rejoice and be glad, for Christ is resurrection, reconciliation for all the human race. We shall all be one in Christ, one in our life together. Praise to God who has created us. Praise to God who has accepted us. Praise to God who sends us into the world. And our sentence and collect for today. Jesus said to them, Go and make disciples of all nations. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we believe your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to have ascended with triumph into your kingdom in heaven. May we also in heart and mind ascend to where he is and with him continually dwell. Through Jesus Christ, our liberator, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm now going to ask Danielle to bring us our reading and our gospel. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. 
He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, beginning at verse 44. Praise and glory to God. Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses the prophets, and the psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written, The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, the Word. Thank you, Danielle. And so, as we have heard our gospel, we make our response, our affirmation of faith, using the form of words on page 481. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Christ is risen, Alleluia. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. We are in the midst of the long festivities of Easter. We have rejoiced 40 days, in fact, over 40 days now, in Christ's bursting from the tomb, and have heard recalled the accounts of Christ's appearances to the disciples and his continued teaching about the kingdom of God. This week, we remember the ascension, when the risen Christ ascended to the glory of God on high. And in this, 
we rejoice and celebrate in God's power at work. For the one whom God raised from the dead is now at the right hand, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, the name above every name in this age and in the age to come. And so having walked through the tumult of death and the surprise of resurrection, we are now at another point of change. They just keep coming. And at the moment that change was about to take place, scripture records Jesus' final words. And he begins by looking back. In the Gospel of Luke, we hear him speaking of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Jesus acknowledges the richness of the past, a past that contains much that is good and much to hold on to. After all, we don't live in a vacuum, and so we are encouraged to look to the people who have walked the mountains before us, so to speak. We can trust them to let us know where the rocks are, and we can make use of their wisdom. As well as looking to the past, Jesus looks forward as well. Forward to what is to come, and in the last frantic final moments before leaving them, having taught and proclaimed and ministered and lived out the kingdom life for years, God's anointed leaves the disciples with a last vision for the reign and rule of God and a command to spread this vision, this good news to all nations. And talking about this, Jesus today uses the ideas of repentance and forgiveness. Now, these can be quite sober, even difficult words to hear, but at the heart of it, the core idea behind repentance and forgiveness is justice. These are justice words that speak of God's desire for us to know freedom and release from captivity. Captivity to sin in a broader sense, but also captivity to unjust practices in the world. And not only to know it, but to show it and to extend it to others. God has always called for freedom and justice for the oppressed and the marginalized. The Old Testament is full of God's calls for this type of justice, for God's people, for the widow, for the alien, for the orphan, for the world. And that call to justice is carried forward and proclaimed even more strongly in Christ. Abuses of power are all too common in the world around us. But that is not the way of God, because God is always turning upside down the unfair power arrangements of the world and forever reaching out to equip people to live into and proclaim the radical vision of a kingdom where the last shall be first, the hungry fed, the poor blessed, and where the persecuted can find their vindication. That is a key part of the vision that Christians are called to embody, a world of justice, peace, and love. The former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, once said, and I absolutely love this quote, Christians are going to be a nuisance in any society. Christians are going to be a nuisance in any society. This justice call and our unwillingness to stop speaking about it is a key part of the reason for that. Christians have been a nuisance ever since those first days that Jesus walked the earth. And as he prepared to leave them, Jesus gave the disciples a task that would guarantee it. 
as he called them to firstly wait until they had been clothed with power from on high, until they had received the Holy Spirit, but then to go forth to the nations to proclaim the good news of God's reign. As he withdraws from them today, Jesus calls the disciples to wait expectantly for their lives to be caught up even more fully into God. As the rising tide set in motion by the resurrection reaches its peak and then continues to spill out abundantly in the overflowing of the spirit. We ourselves are filled with that spirit too, called to participate in the work of God. And as we live these coming days, and as we look ahead to the remembrance of the apostles' baptism by the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, which we'll commemorate next Sunday, as we worship Jesus in great joy, let us also expectantly seek out God's presence in our own lives, that we too may be witnesses to God's love and justice in the world around us. As Paul says in his letter to the Ephesians, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I give thanks for you. I pray that the Lord, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you and how you too may be a nuisance in society for the glory of God, the spreading of the gospel, and the good of all people. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. At this time, I'd like to hand over to Regan Walton to bring us our prayers. Good to go. The prayers this week have been written by me and I invite you in the silent moments to pray out loud or in silence, whatever you wish. Um, and we'll finish on page 484, reading together number three, and then the Lord's Prayer. Let us begin. Let us pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. Our God is an awesome God. We are thankful for his strong presence in our lives. Thank you for his church, my church, our church, and the many ways we have been worshiping. Our St. Mary's is a worship home where we can be family. Ephesians 5.25 teaches us that you, Lord, loved the church like the family we are. Thank you. We pray thanks for our strong past, a wonderful present, and an abundance of blessings for a great future. We pray for our world and for all the people handcrafted in God's image. Live in a wonderful world filled with create creatures of animals created by you. Strengthen our global church to spread agape, a love inside of us all that we freely receive and freely give to others, regardless of our friendship. Thank you that over the last few weeks, we have broken records of care and cleanliness on this planet by simply staying at home in our bubbles. 
we have many blessings on this earth and we pray to see more of them as a simple message of kindness can be spread around the globe. Let our love for thee increase. May thy blessings never cease. Give us plenty, give us peace. God defend our free land. From dishonour and from shame, guard our country's spotless name. Crown her with immortal fame. God defend New Zealand. We pray thanks for our Prime Minister Jacinta Ardern as her and her team gear up for tomorrow's 4pm announcement. Her team have led us through this tough time and showcased how incredible New Zealand is and showed our world-class health system. We pray for youth and children as they returned to school last week. Like everyone, we can be together again, but two metres apart. Thank you for Timaru. As we go on our daily walks, let us view the local wonders of your creation. Botanical Gardens, Centennial Park, Caroline Bay, and many more. We don't have to travel far to notice the local blessings from you, Father. God, you sent us your only son, and he wasn't with us for long, but he achieved such a strong legacy that we keep, lo keep loving him today and evermore. He was and is the living water that has quenched our thirst. We live our lives ready for our resurrection that was displayed by Jesus over the last few weeks of Easter. As he greatly everlasting, as he granted everlasting life for us all. Please let us not take that for granted as we live every day to the fullest of our ability. Lord, please give us compassion for our family and friends that are sick, unwell, or have passed into your loving hands. In the silence, or out loud, we will pray for them by name. Every day, we show that God's love is unfailing and never-ending through our daily ministry. In silence or aloud, let us pray for our daily ministries. And concluding together from our red book on page 484, number three. Thanksgiving, blessing and praise be yours, God of the incarnate. Because you care for us and for our prayer, may our love for you and our likeness to you be strengthened every time we pray. Amen. Christ has taught us, and as Christ teaches, we will pray 
the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Have a good week. Thank you, Regan. Uh, and now let us sing our second hymn, uh, which in the green hymn book is number 10, uh, All for Jesus. It was also in the Pew News. If you are looking it up from the hymn book, we are singing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. I'm going to hand over now to John Hargraves to bring us our hymn. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Jesus said, I am with you always to the end of the age. Let us pray. Oh, let us give praise to God for the risen Christ is with us now in power and majesty, in grace and peace. May we live in him as he lives in the glory of the eternal trinity. Amen. May Christ, who is human and divine, who is of heaven and also of earth, lift up your hearts, lift up your lives to God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Just before I give the dismissal, 
uh, a couple of very brief notices. Uh, as Regan mentioned in the prayers, we are waiting for the government announcement tomorrow afternoon as to what level church services are allowed to move to in terms of the number of people. Once we know that number, we can then make a decision about whether or not our main services will move back into the church for next Sunday morning. Uh, I don't know what way that's going to go yet, uh, but do check back later in the week um, once we will have made that decision. One thing that would be very helpful, um, especially from people who won't be able to come back to the church just yet, um, whether you're uh, choosing to remain in isolation uh, throughout uh, level two, possibly even level one, um, whether uh, due to current uh, illness or infirmity or, or any other number of reasons, you don't think that even if we were moving back to the church, you wouldn't be able to join us for worship, please do get in touch with me this week. Um, or, or in touch with the office and let us know uh, because I, it would help to make that decision to know how many people won't be able to come back just yet um, or also so that we can make provision for as many people as possible, um, whether in, in these services or in some other way. So that would be a great help. Um, if we do not end up going back into the church next Sunday morning. Uh, there is the opportunity, which I, I mentioned last week at the moment for some small group worship services through the week. Um, and uh, if, if that is something that uh, you would like to take advantage of, do uh, once again get in touch with me and we can arrange those times. We, we are arranging uh, we've had one of these small group services. We are arranging them uh, based on the people who who, who come to, to basically ask for them or who uh, we know have not been able to get onto Zoom, who we have uh, attempted to contact. Uh, lastly, um, and, and just for anyone who, uh, this was mentioned very early on this morning before the service, um, just uh, congratulations to Nigel and Margaret uh, on the birth of their latest granddaughter. It's absolutely wonderful news, and we do uh, rejoice with you in that. Uh, I believe they said it was uh, Friday she was born. Um, I, I, stand, I stand to be corrected. Uh, I shall now offer the dismissal from page 490 and then uh, hand back to John uh, for uh, who will play us a postlude, a uh, processional march by Gilmont. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. Thank you.